I'm Dana Griffin from Gainesville, Florida. The fly I'm going to be tying here this morning is a rather unusual pattern. I'm calling it the diving grasshopper. The camera might be able to pick up a picture of it here. This may be the world's only grasshopper that actually dives under the water. And the question could come up, why would it do that? It does that because it's often being preyed upon by birds out in the aquatic stands of grass where it lives. So it goes below the water to escape being preyed on by birds. But its problems aren't over under the water because their bass, brim, pickerel, even turtles love a grasshopper snack. So this insect lives between a rock and a hard place. So we need to tie one because we might just be able to catch a bass or a brim or a pickerel on the diving grasshopper. I went ahead and prepped the hook a bit by putting a tungsten bead up in the front end. That's going to be the weight component of the fly that'll take it down. We've got a thread base already tied. The, uh, the female of this species has what looks like a rather formidable spine at her rear end. And so it's not actually a spine, it's the device she uses to implant her eggs, which she actually puts inside the grass stems. So we're going to use a little bit of orange dyed duck wing to imitate that device called an ovipositor. And then in order to increase the buggy aspect of this fly, you can never uh, have too much buggy in a fly. I'm going to put in a saddle hackle. I'm going to choose a saddle hackle here of about the right length. This fly is designed to go under the water, not deep because the bug doesn't go deep. But we don't want to do anything to increase the buoyancy of the fly, which all of the flues of a saddle hackle might do. So in order to have the buggy aspect but not the buoyancy, I'm going to take the flues off one side of the hackle so that it looks like that. Tie it in in the rear end. Here we are. This fly has a number of different components, but it's basically a fairly simple fly to tie. The body will tie out of very tiny chenille, a little micro chenille. The overall color scheme in this insect is green, though it has places where it shows some orange, like in that ovipositor. So we're going to have a green body now, made out of chenille. Wrap our chenille body. Bring the chenille up in touching turns all the way up to the bead. This is why it's not critical that the bead stay in place while you're tying the fly because in the end it's secured against the chenille body. It's not going anywhere. All right, we can cut off the excess chenille. Follow up with our saddle hackle. Here comes the saddle hackle. The, the wings of this fly, this insect, are a kind of a rusty brown color. There are several materials that can be used to imitate that. In this particular pattern that uh, we're filming here today, I'm going to go with a rusty brown uh, deer hair material for the wing, but you could just as easily use marabou, or any of these synthetic hairs. But I would like to create a kind of runway for the deer hair to go down. So in order to do that, I'm going to remove the saddle hackles along the top, just along the top of the fly. Got a little bit of excess saddle hackle sticking out there. So we'll take a little bit of this rusty deer hair align the hairs ever so slightly in one of the more misnamed instruments on the planet called a hair stacker. Hair stackers don't stack hair, they align hair. But just try and find a, la a fly a catalog that has hair aligners. You'll search a long time. So we're stuck with the name hair stacker. Got the hairs lined up now. 
Let's measure. Don't have to be very long, long enough to go to the end of the body. We'll tie in the hair so that it runs right along that smooth runway that created by eliminating the saddle hackle flues just on top. That's good. Then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in some legs. I'm going to run those along each side of the fly. Tie in one on this side, one on the other side, and we're just about ready to put this one in the water and try and catch a fish. All right. Let's end with a whip finish. We'll be ready to go. There we are. The diving grasshopper. If you tie one, it's almost a guarantee, and you fish it, almost a guarantee you'll be the first human being on the planet to have ever used this pattern in the waters you fish, since as far as I know, it doesn't exist anywhere else. The diving grasshopper. Thank you.